Hello and welcome on the Watchers TV and today we will go a bit deeper in the understanding of a very interesting and intricate watch movement or to be more precise of two movements interacting with each other. And we will do so because following the publication of an SIH8 report where we presented a very special timepiece by Armstrong, well a few of you guys simply asked me what in the world is a resonance movement? So off we go for a slightly geekier video and we went back to Armin Strom and talked with its uh, director Claude Geiser to get a better grasp of this impressive uh, watchmaking technical feat. So first of all, in terms of physics, what are we talking about? We talk about resonance if two bodies which are close to each other and they start to influence each other. Then in physics we are talking about resonance. So in a watch means that if the two movements are influencing each other and sharing a kind of an information to having the same information, that means the same frequency, then we are talking about resonance. So the goal of a resonance watch is having a, the frequency more stable. So what's important to understand is that we have two independent movements within the same watch, meaning two barrels, two very separate gear trains and very importantly two regulating organs. But this phenomenon of resonance only applies when the two balance wheels are influencing each other. But how does that work between these two balance wheels? somehow they have to share an information in between each other and they start to, to synchronize each other and by synchronizing each other they become, this becomes like a stronger signal out of the watch. They can be built next to each other or they also can share an information. This is our case, is, uh, is having a, a clutch spring which is sharing the information from one um, to the other. So before going uh, into more details on their approach, let's go back on the history of resonance movements and how it influenced Claude and his team with their current take on it. There is a history in resonance in the watchmaking industry. There is uh, Christian Huygens, the inventor of the pendulum. He already described the phenomenon of resonance. His idea was having a frequency which is more stable. Back in the time, the pendulum, the mechanisms, they were not as stable uh, as they are today. So he was thinking about having two pendulums influencing each, each other to have a, a frequency which is more stable. I think that the, the pendulum watch of uh, Anti Chanvier is quite a famous one. Uh, that was the first clock uh, having two pendulums beating in resonance. It, it, uh, that was a huge step in, in chronometry in the watch industry. The first uh, wristwatch with the resonance movement was done by François Paul Schoen back in the 90s. Um, that was the very first uh, downsizing of a concept with actually Breguet, Abraham Lugi Breguet was the first watchmaker working on a resonance movement with two balance wheels. So we were very inspired by the, by the, by the, the idea of uh, Anti Chanvier. Anti Chanvier, he said, somehow you have to share the suspension to bring the two pendulums beating in resonance. And this idea of sharing a suspension was actually the, 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 the launch of the idea of having a clutch spring in between the two hair springs. Actually, we are the stud, which is fixed at the air and the end of the hair spring, actually we, which normally is fixed in a movement. These two studs are fixed in a kind of a clutch spring, and this clutch spring brings them to share the information in between each other. So the initial resonance movement presented by Armin Strom came out a couple of years ago with the mirror resonance system and now based on this uh, first and initial development they came out with what they call the pure resonance system. The mirrored force resonance has two uh, second indications um, which one of them is turning clockwise the other one is turning counterclockwise and we have a twin second flyback mechanism so you can push a button to bring the two second hands back to zero and actually you have a visual proof of, of, of the resonance. So the, the watch we just launched uh, during SHH this year, this January, is called the Pure Resonance. So the Pure Resonance is, um, the idea of the Pure Resonance is having the, the, the mechanism or the function of the resonance but without influencing it too much. So we, having, we have our minute second indication on the first movement huh? and we are having just the second movement to synchronize the first movement. So it's a very basic, the very principal way, the purest way of having a resonance. What were the main challenges in developing this movement or timepiece I should say? 
having two movements in one watch, it was a kind of a challenge, but it was not the biggest challenge. The biggest challenge is, is, um, is having this clutch spring. So the development of the clutch spring took us more than two and a half years to find uh, the right shape of this clutch spring. So we, did, we had about uh, 30 different prototypes to find the right way how to do this clutch spring. And ultimately, what are the gains in performance achieved by the shared frequencies of these regulating organs? So the frequency, which is more stable, gives us about a performance gain of 15 to 20 percent comparing to a regular escapement. So we, we worked with different kind of uh, frequencies to find out which one uh, was the best. Uh, so that's still a little secret. That's a little secret, yes. <laughs> Well, so I guess we won't know this frequency that worked best for them, but something I really like about their watch is that this uh, intricate mechanism has been placed on the dial side of the watch and is simply super cool to look at. I mean, to see how these balance wheels are magically synchronizing and follow the function of the clutch spring between them. And lastly, I think it's really remarkable that such a small brand has been able to develop such an amazing movement. And not a concept, but a proper functioning and reliable movement, which, by the way, I think comes at a very fair price considering what it is. So I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, hats off to the Armin Strom team. And I hope that you now all get what is a resonance mechanism. Thanks for watching. Thanks to our great patrons. Means the world to us. See you real soon. Viva watchmaking and always some cool new stuff coming your way. I like it. See you soon.